Hello everyone, uh, this is a very short lecture on what is proof by contradiction and how we use it to prove something about an algorithm. So in proof by contradiction, you want to prove some statement is true, but it's hard to prove this directly. So we don't know how to prove this directly. Rather than proving P is equal to true, we prove, we look at the inverse of p so we assume if p is false what would happen if i can say assuming p is false we get to something bad which we always know it's false for example a statement and its inverted value cannot hold at the same time we say we call this a contradiction and we say this cannot happen so if it cannot happen that P is false, that means P is true. So this is a kind of an indirect way of proving P is true. We just prove that P cannot be false. And that's all that is to it. It's very simple. Now let's, let's uh, look at an example. So here I have a very simple algorithm, which I call it neighbor sum. And uh, as an input, you have a set of consecutive numbers from zero to seven. And what I want is to add them at each two uh, neighbor numbers together. So for example, zero plus one is one, two plus three is five, four plus five is nine, six plus seven is 13. So my input was this set of numbers. My output is an array calling result which has 1, 5, 9, and 13. Now can you prove all members of result are odd numbers? So if you look at the result I have 1, 5, 9, and 13. They're all odd numbers but can we prove this in general case that no matter what is the length of our input um, can I always end up with odd numbers? All right, before I show you the proof, let's see an implementation of this algorithm. I, I implemented this in C++, but it doesn't really matter what language you implemented it. Uh, as an input, we have n, which is the, uh, the, uh, the value uh, the, of the numbers that we want from 0 to 7. In this case, n is 8. And then we start from index 0, we have an integer index called i and we start going uh, incrementing i from 0 all the way to the end of uh, to n every time we add i by 2 so the first time i is 0 and then i calculate i plus i plus 1 which is 0 plus 1 and i push it inside my result array so in this case 0 plus 1 is 1 and i added it here Next, I add i. I add it up by two, so now I end up here, and then again i plus i plus one is two plus three, and it would be five. I push it back inside my result. I add i by two again. Four plus five is nine, and then one more time add up by two. Six plus seven is thirteen, and then at the end I return the result. All right, very simple algorithm, very simple Im implementation. Now prove that result is always, uh, its elements are odd numbers. Now here we use proof by contradiction. Let's say th the value of result um, is, uh, there's at least one value inside result that is not an odd number, an even number, right? So the inverted statement of all the elements inside result are odd would be at least there's one element called e which is an even number so an even number would be 2 multiplied by an integer value so j is inside z which is all integer numbers all right so there is at least one element e which is equal to 2j but we also know since e is inside result e has to be i plus i plus 1 and i is also an integer so 2j is equal to i plus i plus 1 and i is also inside z this implies that 2j is equal to 
2i plus 1. Getting rid of the parentheses here, 2j is equal to 2i plus 1. This implies that if I bring 2i to the left and factor out 2, I should get 2 multiplied by j minus 1 is equal to 1. Now, dividing both sides by 2, I get j minus 1 is equal to 1 over 2. Now look at this. I, I'm subtracting two integer values and, and I'm ending up with a fraction. So if you subtract two values and you end up with a fraction, it has to be that at least one of them is a fraction. It cannot, you cannot have two integer values and subtract them or add them to each other and get a fraction. Therefore, it has to be at least one of them is inside is not inside z now look at this and see where we started from we started from saying both i and j are in z but the exact opposite of this would be at least one of them is not in z and this ladies and gentlemen is called as contradiction because we got a contradiction e cannot be an even number so every element that we choose from result has to be an odd number and again honestly that's all that is to it you start from if you want to prove something to be true you start from assuming it's false you try to get to something bad which is a contradiction and then you go back and say hey p cannot be false it has to be true now before I finish, I'm, uh, I have an exercise and homework for you. So here's another algorithm, very simple one, and it's called find max. Uh, as an input, you get an array. Now I initialize this result variable to something very small. This is the smallest value you can store in a variable. And then I traverse, I iterate through all of the in, uh, elements of inputs. Whenever I see there's an element that is greater than result, I update result to that value. So again, I traverse inside input. Whenever I see an element that is greater than my current result, I update result to that value. And then at the end, I return the result. Now, we want to prove that result is the maximum value in this inputs array. And as a hint, use proof by contradiction um, and see if you can prove mathematically that result is always the maximum of all the elements inside inputs. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video.